Okay, everybody, today's topic is new quizzes in Canvas. Specifically, we're going to look at all 13 question types. I'm going to let you know which ones are my favorites, and I'm going to share with you some things to look out for. Let's go. Okay, so let's get right into it and go through the 13 different question types in new quizzes in Canvas. New quizzes because uh, classic quizzes uh, was supposed to go away actually at the, at, the, uh, at the year this year, at the end of 2020, but they're leaving it in for the end of school. But for next year, uh, it's going to be gone, so let's live in new quizzes. Uh, question type number one, and at the end, we'll, by the way, we'll, we'll go through a preview so you can see what these look like from the student perspective. But question type number one is called categorization. What it lets us do is, if we go into the edit screen of it, we get to pick uh, our two categories. We get to sort them by correct answers. And then I like this down here where we can add distractors so that students really have to know what to leave and, and what to keep. So that's the first question type. Question type number two is essay. Pretty straightforward. What I do like about it is that I can I can give them access to the rich content editor. I can give them access to spell check and word count. And I can even set a word limit of minimum and maximum. So I'm making sure I'm getting, you know, not too much, but uh, enough to answer the question like that. File upload still uh, another pretty straightforward question type. But one thing I like about it is that I can restrict the file types. So if I don't want a million different things, I don't want Word docs and PowerPoints, I only want pictures or potentially a PDF, I can, I can denote that right here within the question. It won't allow other items in. Question four is fill in the blank. The fill in the blank question type um, I like, but you have to be careful with. There's three different kinds of fill in the blank questions in Canvas new quizzes. Uh, there's just the generic good old fashioned, uh, oh, hey now. Just a good old fashioned regular uh, fill in the blank question right here. Uh, what I'm able to do is in the open entry question, I can uh, I can choose how the text matches. And so this we want to be careful. Does it contain canvas? Is it close enough? Is it an exact match and specify? There's all these different things we can choose. We want to choose specify correct answers. I can accept canvas. I could also accept take a look at fill in the blank. So fill in the blank is a good question type, but you have to be careful with it. There's three different kinds of fill in the blank essentially within Canvas. There's open entry where they're just typing in their answer. And then you can do things down here like where you can specify correct answers. You can go to close enough. Uh, you can in, inside there, you can ignore spelling. So you have some options. I'd, I'd be careful with that one. Um, we found that sometimes people were doing things that should have given a correct answer and didn't. Uh, here we have a drop down menu, so I'm just giving them some fill in the blank options, basically a multiple choice within a sentence. And then down here, there's word bank. I, I like the word bank a lot. Um, it makes them, you know, choose it's it's a drag and drop kind of question. I, I like that a lot personally. Let's take a look at formula. The formula question I like, um, it's going to give a different question sort of to to each student. Um, but it's complicated. You go in the edit screen here and you can see, you know, you write the question, but you put X in parentheses. You have to give it, um, you know, some, so you have X here in your minimum and maximum. You can specify a range of values for each variable. Then you put the definition in. It, 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 it looks complicated, I think, because it is slightly complicated, but it's a good question type if you're asking, especially for our younger students, if you're giving them a, an example of, you know, um, uh, just like this, you know, an average laptop weighs six pounds, calculate the weight of X laptops, and you want them each to do a different problem. A little bit complicated to set up, sure, um, but I, I do like this question type. If you're interested in using that, I would talk to your ITC, um, somebody on your, on your department or staff or CLT that's already doing it, or talk to me. I'll help you out. The next question type is called Hotspot. Hotspot is cool because you're essentially asking a question from an image that you've uploaded and then you've identified where the correct answer is on that image. So um, on this question, we said, you know, click the, where's the trapezoid? And so then you go in here and you draw around where the trapezoid is and then that becomes the correct answer for this question type. I like that a lot. Uh, downfall to it is that you can't have more than one hotspot on the image, which is unfortunate, but. Uh, still a good question type. We go further. Uh, matching. I like the matching. You'll notice there's four over here. Um, inside here, we have the four correct answers, but then there's also distractors. I'll show you what that looks like in the student version. Um, but I, I again, I like distractors as part of questions. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm being difficult, but um, I like distractors. 
Multiple answer is exactly what it sounds like. You just write the, the question and the possible answers and you check all that are correct. Uh, pretty self-explanatory there. Same with multiple choice. Uh, you know, you write the question and the answer. Uh, you mark which one's correct and serve is not short. It's my fave. Uh, numeric is a question that only accepts a number answer um, and you can have multiple answers, uh, which I like because, uh, you know, the song is 1999 and uh, obviously no one wants to party in 2020 because it's the worst. So uh, 2021, two answers there. Um, I like the ordering question where we can, it's a dra another drag and drop kind of question. So you give them the order of things as they should be from book one to book seven. And then the students have to drag them into the correct order. That's got tons of potential in all sorts of content areas and at different age levels, I feel like. Question 12 is true, false. Um, guys, it's true, false. Not a lot to it. Uh, the 13th question type is really like almost a whole nother category question type. It's called a stimulus question. What a stimulus question does is it lets us put something over here on the left that then we can add questions to. So if you go in here, when you go into the stimulus setup and to edit it, you can add, you get your full rich content editor. So if you want to add a picture or a movie or some text or whatever, you can put that here and then ask questions. And over here on the right, I have my full bank of question types that I can add to it. So I, all of the question types that we've gone over, over could be attached to whatever the stimulus is. I, I, I think that's an absolutely fantastic question type. Instead of adding, having to add the same thing over and over and over and over and over, you can just put it in as a stimulus um, and then it's on each question. Let's take a look at what this looks like from the student perspective. So let's go up here. Um, oh, I need to get out of that. Let's go up here to preview. So we get in a preview just so you can see them. Here's the drag and drop um, categorizing. You see that there's, you know, um, not all shapes belong in a category. I think that's fair to put in. And then we're just dragging things around. Here's the numeric one. Um, so we would say canvas here. And then we would go here and choose our answer uh, for this one. Uh, we would choose our answer here. And then we could drag an answer here. Um, multiple select so we have all these things uh, here's the drop down menu so there's extras you can see that that's the matching but it's matching with distractors true false and then there's our stimulus question that's it guys that's it for the question types in canvas if you have any questions please feel free to find us on twitter or at the website or email one of us and we'll be glad to help you out have a good one everybody